Demen Senebetachu. Greeting, Salam Tanat, and I used to link. And Demen, how Senebetachu? How did you spend the Shabbat? How did you spend the Senbet? It's a older holy Ethiopia greeting among the Beta Israel and among the Ethiopian Christians on that Judeo Christian foundation of ancient Ethiopia where the Shabbat or the Senbet was observed. And the gathering would be on the Sunday or the first day, the Ihud. This is why in ancient times when they came to Ethiopia, the Portuguese, the Portuguese, and later on the Jesuits, because the Jesuits wasn't established when the first Portuguese came around 1530, 1530 or so, right? But anyway, they observed the Roman Catholic Church that this Ethiopian church was so amazing and fascinating so many ways and so biblical, and they could understand so many things about the Bible by looking at holy Ethiopia, historical Ethiopia, our divine heritage Ethiopia. But they noticed a curiosity was that the Ethiopians still keep the Sabbath or the Shabbat of the Jews. And this is true. And even His Imperial Majesty, Kadamawi Haile Selassie, also kept the Shabbat or the Senbet, what's known as the Sabbath of the Jews. After all, he is Moa Anbesa, Ze'im Negera Yehuda. Now, my brothers and sisters, once again, Shalom Rastafari and a Shabbat Shalom to you all. And we're going to go over and review this week's Parsha, this week's Kufl, this week's portion, which is the 36th portion called Beha'alotika. Beha'alotika. Beha or He. Alotika, when you step up, that's 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 a targum or a translation of targum in the in the Hebrew according to the Hebrew understanding of today. And how interesting is that? When you step up, now please recall, especially disciples and brothers and sisters who have been studying this series of Torah portion readings and feedings, when we noted that. This book, the book of Numbers, is a book of service and, and the walk, of, of the service and the walk. In other words, when we speak about, well, what is the work that we are to do? Yeshua HaMoshia says the work that we are to do is to have amen, to have men, to have true and faithful witness. In other words, the faith, the amen is the key. And we have to strengthen our faith by hearing the word because it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the true God, by the word of Ha Elohim, by the word of Hashem, by the word of the Moshiach, by the word of Christ. All right? So this is very important that, that hearing, what do we hear? You understand? What do we incline our listening? Who do we listen to? Wh which voice do we hear? or what word, what message do we hear that we admit in our heart is true? Is it, the, is it what the world says, or is it what the King of Kings and his Christ says? Is it what Torah says? Is it what the Metav Kedu says? Is it what the Holy Spirit says? This is the key. Now, this portion right here, um, Beha Alotika, when you step up, Bamarinya, in the Royal Amharic, in the Revised Amharic Bible, which we call the Arab, or the Authorized Amharic Bible, the Metzhaf Kedus, biblically, the Book of the Seven Seals, it is known as Sitelekus, 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 Sitelekos, or Sitelekus, Sitelekus, which means when you light up, when you burn, or in a sense, when you begin, when you begin on, on, on a higher level of interpretation, the basic level is when you light, like to light up. You understand? Now, I know the, some of the senses or connotation that this can be easily taken into or taken to amongst Ionized Rastafari. 
And not saying that there's not an application there, but let's first of all hear what Jod's words say and let us, let us hear it, let us read it, let us study it, let us commit it to our memory and meditate upon it. We can't meditate on it if we don't have it in our, in our memory. You understand? We can read it, we can hear it, we can study it, we must study and show ourselves approved to God, to Jah, as workmen and workwomen, if you please, that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You understand? That means knowing the right application, so we have to study this. So here in this particular Torah portion, it's from Numbers chapter 8, verse 1, to Numbers chapter 12, verse 16. Now, if you, let's put this over here for a moment, and um, as possible, and we're going to get to fifth, the fifth book, which is uh, Devarim, or Orit Zedagim, but actually the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy, so we can complete the set. But we also want to add to the final set this particular um, Sabbath house readings and maybe expand it a little bit more so that in one's um, personal study or in their Bible study or their church or collective study groups or just individual study, one can utilize these particular documents, which is a compilation of the Wikipedia, um, the Torah portion or the Parshiot, which is online. And then we're going to go through this a little bit in more detail as we compare it with the Ethiopic Torah and with the uh, Metzhav Kedus, so we can now overstand it. We're getting to understand these things and stand in these things, so we can overstand the half of the story that has not been told until now. So, this particular chart right here, which is the Sabbath House readings, you can go to the website www.lojsociety.org. And you can download this and some of the other on the study page, forward slash study, some of the other free um, shareable, downloadable books. We speak about some of these books. If we can get them in PDF, we'll put them out there so that ones can have an easy access at a basic elementary level of study to get a basic, like a boot camp, a basic foundation so that we can get I-9 boots on the ground of I-9 promised land in due time. So... In this particular chart, you know, there's the Haftorah or the Nabiyat. There's three particular portions. One is from Torah. The first portion, the foundational portion, is Torah. And in this particular portion, the 36, the Ha'alotika or Sitelekos, it's Numbers chapter 8, verse 1 to Numbers chapter 12, verse 16. Then is what's known as the Haftarah or the Nabiyat, the prophetical portion. And the prophetical portion is the second reading. And the second reading here for this week's Shabbat, this week's sabbatical reading and feeding, for the Sabbath we carry the thought and the meditation into the week or into the days leading up to the next Shabbat. Yovas. So on the, the, the Shabbat, keeping it holy as possible is to spend time at least reading the Word, getting a general idea of what is contained in the Word. And if you can, try to read through, like, well, I'm talking about these three different, you know, we got the Torah portion, the, the Nabiyat portion, the, the sec second column, and the third column is the um, Berit Hadasha. Right, is the Berit Hadash or the Hadith Kidan, which is the New Testament portion. That's where we get the veil. The veil is then rent in Christ. That's where we get the overstanding and the revelation of the King of Kings and his Christ. So, with that being said, I just want to encourage ones and ones um, in also reading all three portions at least within the week. I don't know what in, in individuals coming out of whatever situation, you might have to be patient and, you know, work to, to really get to that point where you can really read and study, but still try to take, you know, try to take the time out, you know what I mean, for, for serious study. And I know that many folks probably are in situations where there's a lot of uh, distraction, whether... Um, 
just human, bad human beings, or whether demonic or not, but pray. You know, pray for those things that you need in the name of Yeshua HaMushi, in the name of Jesus Christos, and have faith that when you pray for these things, if it's according to his will, that you will receive these things. Don't, don't doubt. You know what I'm saying? Don't doubt. You see, that's where the real wealth and value is, is in the true faith. You know what I'm saying? That's where we get the confidence. That's where we get the unity. That's where we get the trust. You know what I'm saying? That's where our morality starts to rise. And we all have a personal responsibility in this. Now, with that being said, let's get into this portion, get an overview of what this particular Torah portion, when you step up or in the Hebrew. Let's go to let's let's go to the scripture. Let's go to our Bibles and we're going to use the Schofield, the Schofield Study Bible. Um because it's excellent notes and and comparing uh Old Testament with New Testament. So it helps us to see um the 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 the, the, the fulfillment of this Old Testament pattern. You see, even according to the order of Malkaz Edek there's an Old Testament pattern. It's according to that pattern of Levi. You know what I'm But now it's not of Levi, but it's of Moa and Bessa the Imanegeta Yehuda. For it's evident that our Adonai sprung out of Judah, of which Moses spoke nothing concerning the priesthood. You know what I'm Because there's, there were things that, that Jah did not even reveal to, to Moses. But Moses did that which you know, that which he was to do, and that's why we have this testimony. That's why we have the testimony of the transfiguration as well, which is a, another connected and very interesting matter. But let's go to Numbers chapter 8, verse 1. So we're still in the order of Jah's host. In other words, I and I is Jah's army. And now there's, there's some other portions of this Torah portion, um, this book 4 right here, um, by Midbar the Hebrew book of Numbers, that's interesting. I find myself actually going over the, the, the two previous portions, since this right here is, the, is the, third, the third reading in the book of Numbers. I find myself going, going to the previous um, portion, Naso, going over Naso again, and even Bamidbar again, and with the notes that are here, also within this particular part of Shah, this particular Torah study, it, it's very excellent if you can get a chance. If you don't have the book, you can go to the, you know, the Wikipedia, and you can see it there. You can save it, and you can read it. Some very interesting highlights I want to make some references to, because we can't just keep going forward and not pay attention to these things, because some of the, the errors and, and, and even potential difficulties that we see is because some of these things are, are not really being focused on or we're not, we're not interpreting it and putting it in the right light. And I, I'm, I'm going to go into, Jah will, and go into what I mean by that as, as I and I move forward. But this portion right here, so we're going to do a couple of verses right here because this part of Shah, this portion, it tells of the lampstand, the lampstand in the tabernacle and the consecration or the making holy of the Lewawiyan or the Levites, as well as the second Fasica. So here we're dealing with the second Fasica. So this is just two years out of Egypt or the Egypt of the Duat, the Egypt of the underworld. How a cloud and fire, it led the Beta Israel. So they were being led by a cloud and fire. Now, some even speculate that perhaps there was some connection with a Nibiru sort of an incident. And this is interesting, too, because that particular star or planet known as Nibiru also has a relevance with our Ethiopian ancient scrolls and also concerning these signs in this particular time, 2012. But however that may be, here in this Torah portion, we learn how a cloud of fire, a cloud and fire, had led the Beit Israel. We learn of the silver trumpets, the, the silver trumpets, and how the Beit Israel set out on their journeys. We also read in this Torah portion 
of the complaining by the Beta Israel. I'm, when I read that, I think and I, recognizing who this this ethnic these ethnic Hebrews are, so called Negroes, blacks, and coloreds complaining, right? It's like it's like niggas always talking some bleep. You know what I mean? I mean that that whole idea. When you get into the story and you put in the proper context, you recognize who but they or who but we. You understand know what kind of people but we. So this this is both good news or maybe bad news initially, but there's good news in it. There's good news in it because it explains to us now a lot of things that black folks are running around acting like they just don't know. If they don't want to receive the truth, because the truth is like a light, and perhaps they don't want their 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 shortcomings. They don't want to step up to come into the light. So sometimes folks will run away from that, and Allow them. You understand? Allow them. You understand? Whoever receives your peace, you know, may peace be with them. But if your peace comes back to you, it says, dust off your feet from that. You understand? But not in your righteousness, in Yeshua, in Jesus Christos, in our black Lord and Savior's righteousness, the glory of our Father, Abba Kedus. And the last portion of this, this parsha is how Miriam and Haron, how they question Musa, how they question Moses, how Miriam and Aaron. You know, and I thought about something when I was going over this portion and studying, you know, because even though we have gone over this again, we always learn something becomes crystallized or clarified by study, and especially in this prophetic time because we recognize there are instructions for us to get us out the chaos or Babylon confusion that we're in now, to get to that unity that we always speak of. I and I need to unite. I and I need to unite. We need to come together. Well, here is the coming together. If it's not in covenant, if it's not according to our birthright, then we're still doing it wrong because of the birth wrong. We need to be born again. We need to repent and then have a change of mind. Because now Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, they're in a foreign or an artificial state of mind. They have to be born again so they come into their truly God-given natural state of mind, the birthright. And then they have the potential to live in that grace but within that covenant. See, that's, that's, that's the key. And Satan and, and the media and all the distraction and everything, they're doing everything possible to keep y'all from this truth. And there's many other brothers and sisters who, who are moving according to their call or spirit that are trying to bring the truth out just, just to wake ones up, or at least for ones to be, to, to, to be conscious of this and to make a, a choice. It's about making that choice. See, some people know the truth, but they still are wavering on that double-mindedness. Pray about it. Pray about it. You just can't get yourself out of that double mind because it's like a spirit. You know what I'm saying? You got to pray to the Father, to Abba Kedus, to Kedus Abba Tachin, in the name of Jesus Christos and have faith for that power. You know what I'm And also study the, study the scriptures because there's a lot of key verses that, that are actually protections according to your faith. If you're weak in faith, then those verses will be work weekly. You know what I'm saying? If you're strong in faith, I mean, look how many folks even testify whether they are Christians or not to verses like the Lord is my shepherd, giving them strength. Even some of them are not a Christian, but they hear that when they get in a situation, they, they hear that and they, they trust in that, they repent at that moment, they're saved. So how much more I and I? Well, it's according to I and I faith. You understand? And when we look at the present situation of our people, it's a, it's a lack of faith. You understand? It's, it's, a, it's a job problem. It's a God problem. But this parsha, this portion, the halotika or sitelequis, you understand? Um, when you step up or when you um, light up, it sets out some laws, some laws of fasica. Some of the laws for Passover are set out. Um, Beta Israel or Ehud, Yehuda. Also read part of the Parsha, this portion, Numbers chapter 9, verses 1 to verse 14, as the initial Torah or Rit Minbar, the initial Torah reading for the fourth 
intermediate day of Fasica. And the fourth, in other words, you know, there's those seven days, and the fourth intermediate day of 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 Fasica of Pesach is called the Chol Ha Meod. The Chol Ha Meod. All right. Um, so this, this this portion or portion of this 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 Torah, a portion of this particular reading is read on that fourth intermediate day. Now we, we can get into more details on that, but this is just a basic overview. So if we look at a summary. There's eight main parts of this that we can divide this particular Torah study in. This is why we say that these, these books are going to be in, invaluable for us to study individually and collectively. You understand? Because you can see Shabbat by Shabbat, even if you're just reading these things casually and you, and you really haven't really made that full decision, but you, you know, you're, as you say, dabbling in it. You understand? You're being greatly blessed for that, and I hope. You're conscious of that because sometimes we're blessed, but we're not conscious of it. But when something goes wrong, we become conscious of it. You see what I'm saying? This is also part of the birth wrong. So we have to be born again so we be in our right mind and our proper person and spirit. Now, of course, we're speaking about um, getting our documents and paperwork and, and our sovereignty. But it begins with faith. It begins with the spirit. It begins with the individual. Each of us is precious before the Holy Father, before Abba Kedus, in the name of Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior. We have to recognize that. We have to know that. But it doesn't mean that one is more special than the next one or so forth and so on. But in a true born-again state of mind, that wipes out so much mixed-up moods and attitudes. And I wasn't going to say it in this particular message, but just for the record, um, we heard and we haven't um, verified it. But another elder in um, Ethiopia, one who has uh, repatriated, um, returned home to the African and see on to Shashimani, has transitioned. You understand? Has transitioned, as we would say, to the to the spirit world or to the high etheric world, um, and left behind this this vessel called the body. And it's a sister, it's a mama in Rastafari named Mama Bubbles. If I'm correct, um, that was the, the, the sister of uh, um, Brother Bongo Rocky, if I'm correct. And um, he passed, um, transitioned um, almost a year or so, roughly, give or take some time. So it, it's very important that we understand that, that, that you, you're not just hearing this message. If you're hearing this message... You understand, especially if it's for the first time. You understand, but if you if if you've been studying these messages and paying attention, and and if and if and if John has opened up your understanding, you know, because some folks can't understand because John hasn't opened up their understanding. You, you have to recognize that even faith is a gift. The, the scripture says so. You understand, and His Majesty and and I and I know it's true. You understand, so we give thanks. For that, because sometimes we get upset with folks who can't see, you know, or they they don't get it. Still, we should really pray for them, and 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 even trust the Holy Spirit to guide us if possible. Because sometimes the way we we're, we're going about it, we're going about the wrong way, and we might not be focusing on our own growth, on growing up. Because maybe we ha we're a little bit excited, a little bit emotional, you know, about all the new truths and 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 what we're seeing. And, and, you know, we want someone else to see it, but we might also be violating their own free will. You understand? And instead of doing that, you know, and that might also, that, that does affect our own walk as well. You understand? Because even to harm one on a certain level, you know, there's the laws of the spirit. There's the laws of the, of the suke, of the psyche, you know. One might call it karma. One might call it debt. One might call it guilty conscience. You know, call it what you will. Th these also are governed by certain laws, sowing and reaping. You understand? And as one begins to become clear about those things, I think the Cannabis Matrix, those who have checked out the Cannabis Matrix, um, the author, Johannes, the composer, he, he touches on it in a very simple way. But if, if you pick up what I picked up, I said, 
this is beautiful because it's 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 not even saying Rastafari, but in connection with the cannabis and the scripture and that whole idea of overstanding and overcoming, it's right it's, it's right on the mark. But anyway, the summary is this: the summary for this Torah portion, the thirty sixth Torah portion, is the lampstand first and foremost. Now we know the lampstand is a type of Christ. You know, this is something that we that we we learn from. Um, the study of the scriptures and the study of these Torah portion. I think it was uh, uh, Exodus breaks that down. Now, we're still in the order of the host, because a host, that means I and I coming together. In my father's house, there are many mansions. You understand? So when we speak of the society, a larger society, we see ourselves as another mansion in I and I father's house. So according to that, it, it, it shouldn't be about, well, playing one mansion against the next. It should be about what is His Majesty's teaching? What is His will for us? What are the best um, um, tactics and procedures for I and I? You understand? You know, what, what brings us blessing and peace and prosperity and, and, and strong families? This we need to focus on and this we need to do because the enemy is steadily wearing away at that, and already there's been many victims. You understand, many of us have, have, have experienced that loss to this whole world system. You understand? But remember what um, happened to Job. You understand? Don't forget the faith of Job, you know. And remember what the disciples said, we've left mother, father, sister, we've left all for you. And Christ said, you, you will get that even, even enough fold, even more over abundantly. You understand? Don't, don't worry about the things behind, but it's the things before I and I. You understand? Because in spirit and in truth and the true faith, Jah has I and I back. You understand? He, he has our back. You understand? I and I forward ever, backward never. However, right here, the first two verses says, and Yahweh spake to Musa, saying, speak to Aaron and say to him, when you lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. Over against, it says the candlestick here in King James, read lampstand. Um, and Aaron uh, did so, I should say menorah, actually. He lighted the lamps, or the lights in other words, thereof over against the candlestick or the menorah, as Yahweh commanded Musa. And this work of the candlestick or the menorah was of beaten gold to the shaft thereof, to the flowers thereof, was beaten work according to the pattern which yod heh wow -Hey, which Yah, which Yahweh, Baruch Hu, blessed be he, had shewed Moses, Moshe, Musa, so he made the menorah. All right, that's, that's the basic idea of when you step up. In other words, when you step up or when you light up, when you, st when you come to the high height, the illumination, you understand, of Christ. Because the, the lamp stand is symbolic, right? The lamp stand is symbolic of that. In fact, let us just see if we can just um, go to 25 and 31. Let's just go to 25 and 31 and see if it's there, 25 and 31. We're in Exodus, Exodus 25 and 31 in the Schofield. And here we're on page 102 for those who have a hard copy or the digital copy. It says down here, candlestick, which is really the menorah, um, a type of Christ, our light, our burhan, burhanachin, shining in the fullness of the power, the chayil, of the sevenfold spirit. So, so the, the menorah that we see in the tabernacle is a type of Moshiach, is a type of Christos, Christos Burhanachin of Christ, our light, our illumination, shining in the fullness of the power of the Chayil, of the sevenfold spirit, of the, the spirit that has is seven it's one spirit, but it has a sevenfold nature. You understand? 
It has a sevenfold nature. Now, this is best way to understand this is actually in some of the sacred geometry. And there's a vid out there called um, um, Secrets, I think, in Plain Sight. I think we're going to have that one available. Check it out. Um, but notice this. It has Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Take a note of this and check it out, those who are really interested in this. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. So that's Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. It's going to speak on the menorah. It's going to speak on the sevenfold spirit. Now remember, in man, remember man was made in the image, and after the likeness of God, we have these seven seals in man. You know what, what they may call seven chakras, or we call seven sifra or sifro these chakras in man along the spinal column. Now, well, you could get into the numbers of it, all is numbers, but you can also see the, the microcosm and the macrocosm and the whole link up even in the numbers. Look at the seven, the seven chakras, right? The spine, 33 vertebra, you understand, including the sacral part with one bone, but if you connect the, the ridges, it'll be 33. And, and see that even within the Ethiopic, how Hebrews 2.2 2 is 22. But the Amharic is 3.3 3 is 33. That, there's no, that's not a coincidence. That is by divine design. All right? But now here, in overstanding this candlestick, because some of you all might read this and say, okay, a candlestick, do this. The candlestick is beating out of gold, so from so on. All right. So, you know, and look at some pictures. Okay, that's how it looks. But you're not getting the fullness of it. So you have to remove that veil. And that veil is done away with in Yeshua. That, that veil is done away with in Christ. Christ in his kingly character. And according to the testimony of Yeshua, the, the son of Jah. It says that natural light was excluded from the tabernacle. This is interesting, that natural light, was excluded. So you see a lot of religious places that have like windows and sunlight coming in and all that, and they call himself a church or from so on. What's interesting is that in the tabernacle, and some of y'all are Jehovah Witness or were Jehovah Witness or in some of these other so-called denominations, they might do that. They might actually have no, have the windows all sealed up. You know, no artificial, you understand, no artificial, um, um, I mean, no natural so-called light coming in in that sense. No, no, no um, light coming in from the outside. So it says right here in the note that natural light was excluded from the tabernacle. Then it gives some notes here. This is for a further study. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Then it says, see Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. There's a note there. And see John chapter 1, verse 4. There's a note there. And I'm familiar with these, these areas right here, and, and that right there is just a meditation, a study, and a, and, a, and a beautiful meditation on that. Because now as you understand, well, okay, you see a, you see a menorah, you, you know what I mean? You see the seven-branch menorah, right? And so you, you recognize what that symbol looks like. But that symbol, what that type is, is a way of like a verbal hieroglyph in the true metaphysics of Christ to show us his, his, his fullness, to show us something even deeper than, you know how symbols, symbols are interesting, you know, and there's some symbols right here in the scriptures that we have to take note of. You understand? And they can be some very sweet meditations, and they, and they really do illuminate I and I. You know, when we re recognize, okay, so the candlestick is actually a type of Christ, our light, shining in the power of the sevenfold spirit. And that natural light, you know, like so-called sunlight, was excluded from the tabernacle, from the tabernacle area. So understand now how important lighting or stepping up to light, you understand, to light that menorah to light those lamps was in the whole tabernacle setting. You understand? Know Seeing that there was no artificial or, or natural light. You understand? Know there was only the light of that candle 
that 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 lamp stand. You could talk because they they often use candlestick candle stand, but it wasn't they didn't use can they didn't use wax candles. It was oil lamps, and then then even the oil, how oil is 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 symbol of the Holy Spirit. You know, so we look at well, what does oil do? You understand what are all the uses of oil? You understand, and 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 you know, for health, for medicine, for beauty, for comfort. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying. So the Holy Spirit does these same things. So one type is being used to to explain and to get us in the right state of mind to to begin us to transform our minds to see these things in their true context. You see, because what we're living, this, this, this so-called reality we're living in is upside down. It's out of order. You understand? So, of course, these things might seem um, counterintuitive, you understand, but in, on, on that level, too, to pray. You know, that pray and study, pray and work, work and pray. Now, in saying that, let's just go through this part right here. So, now, now last, last, um, Last uh, Shabbat, um, there was a Nazarite vow. Now, this, this year, this cycle, we didn't really focus too much on the Nazarite vow um, as we have in previous um, um, years in, in teaching this particular Torah portion or the Torah portion. Naso is the one that concerns that right there. And it's not because there's not more that we need to learn and apply, but there's the certain points the Holy Spirit is saying, you see how they were getting themselves organized. They were learning how to, how, what to do when they got into that promised land. And they even were going through rehearsals for that. The Moedims, the festivals were rehearsals for that. In fact, um, about a week or more, week or two, a little less than two weeks ago was when... Um, the Shavuot, which is the um, harvest, you know, the harvest festival, um, which is one of our seven holy, high, holy days. But as I, I mentioned before, the harvest, we, we can look at it spiritually, metaphysically, but what Yah at the ground level is preparing is the ground. You know what I'm saying? Preparing that good ground, our hearts, our minds, for us to go in the land, you know what I'm saying? Reclaim the land and also prepare that good ground. You know what I'm saying? That good ground. You know, um, you know food is very important. You know, I don't think more needs to be said on that. You know, and how disconnected we peoples are. It's, it's, it should be really scary. Think about it for a moment. Most of us in these cities or cities, you know, and there are some brothers and sisters who are taking a very proactive um, um, role upon themselves, and may the Holy Spirit guide them as we work together to even establish um, perhaps um, certain places where ones can go and, and kind of like deprogram and prepare and do a little farming. You know, I mean, some Rastafari, churchical type of communities as kind of... Um, jump off basis, so to speak, you understand, but that is still in the process, but we all still are in the wilderness, this is the key thing right here, so with that being said, let me go back to this right here for a moment, because there's so much that, that's embedded in here, you overs, and it's just to try to inspire you all to, especially the brothers, especially, especially the brothers, when I mentioned the last two um, Torah portions, there's, there's some things I need to probably just recap for a moment. Recap, all right? Because hopefully this 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 week we can touch on some of the the subject matters in this particular Torah portion. But let's just recap for a moment. So I'm gonna go right to the very first Torah portion. This is a little bit of a a, a recap. Right, a recap, because let's deal with the matter of age. Have you noticed, if you've been reading and studying um, the Torah portions for the Book of Numbers, you notice that there's a particular age, a particular age, right? Um, 
following the exodus from Egypt, John had directed Moshe, Moses, to take a census of the Beta Israel men, or the males, who were aged 20 years old and up, according to Numbers chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, I'll quote, all those in Israel, all those of the Beta Israel who were able to bear arms. So it's kind of interesting because you hear about this child soldier thing in Africa and, and elsewhere, so forth and so on. Um, and when you look at the age here for those men who were counted as potential soldiers, they had to be at least 20 years old and up. No 13-year-old, 12-year-old, 9-year-old, given a gun or whatnot. No, they had to be 20 years of age. So think 4,000, 3,000 or so years, they tell us ago, how civilized our ancestors were. Because, see, a lot of the devils out there try to make you think, oh, going back to the Bible and Old Testament, it was so much misery. and That's a satanic delusion. You know what I mean? Basically, that's a satanic delusion. You, know, you hear folks say, we're not under the law no more. And they're Gentiles. They never were under the law. You know, it's, it's such a hypocrisy. But the scriptures here is pointing out certain things dealing with age that I thought was very, very important because there's some subject matters that we have to take stock of, especially nowadays, that might not be for everyone and they might not be you know, there's an age appropriateness that we're going to have to um, consider, you know. And when I first went through this Torah portion a couple of times, I looked at all the stats, looked at all the numbers, all the tribes, and the thousands in this tribe, what percent of the population, you know, do all the statistical stuff. And it's interesting, yes. And, you know, there's more to those numbers than meets the eye as well. But then... The Holy Spirit says, are you paying attention? And I wasn't really paying attention because I said, wait, there's some, age, there's some age considerations that we need to understand because, see, John had also told Moses not to enroll the Levites. In other words, the Levites or the priests, today if we say we're of the order or after the order of Melchizedek, right, then we are like the Levites were in the time of Moshe, in this time of the Moshiach, in his kingly character, we are like the Levites, but after the order of Melchizedek, all right? But now the Levites, according to this pattern, they were put in charge of carrying, assembling, tending to, and guarding the tabernacle and its furnishings. We find out in the same First chapter, Numbers chapter 1, verses 47 to 53. Any outsider, right, any trespass or outsider who encroached on the tabernacle was to be put to death, according to Numbers chapter 1, verse 51. Now, some folks would say, man, see, that's what I'm telling you about. The Old Testament, they were brutal. They were harsh, really. Mm, that's why you have people who are doing all sort of rape and murder and everything now that they just throw them right back out on the street to do more of the same. And this is harsh. It's like if somebody breaks into your house, right, and you might not have a gun or whatever, but you have a hammer or a baseball bat, and you, and you, and you put that one to death, they broke into your house. They even have that on the law. See, that's where the common law comes from, the Bible law, where if someone breaks into your house, and, 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 you, and you kill that person. You didn't murder them, but you killed that person who violated and broke into your house, had no right in your house, and was a threat to yourself and your family. Um, why is that any different than encroaching on the tabernacle? You know what I'm saying? So, so you have to think about those things. See, if you're following the world, this is why, you know, it's, it's a matter of self-recognition. You know, you have to, when you come to consciousness, truly, you start to observe your own thoughts and be like, why, why, why am I thinking that? And, and then you'd be like, you know, I really don't feel that way or know my knowledge doesn't tell me that, but it's like you, reckon, you start to recognize the programming. You know, when it's too difficult for you to 
to to say overcome, don't forget the resources of prayer. You understand? Know and and fasting. And fasting, you know, and the overstanding goes beyond just fasting from food, physical food. It could be fasting from doubt. You understand? Know fasting from speaking in a certain way. Because sometimes if we check our speech, in fact, that's one of the things that we have to actually is a part of being born again. We no longer really want to speak our own words, but we want to speak his words or speak our words, you understand, in a way that will be approvable to him because then we really recognize the relationship. So we recognize the relationship with our God, Father, in the name of Yeshua, HaMoshiach, then it is supernatural for us to recognize that within our brothers and sisters who are in that same relationship. You see, there's, there's no faking it. There's no pretensing it. There's, you know, the, the, there's a whole consciousness in the Holy Spirit, and people have become so materialized that, that they don't even recognize their breath in, anymore. And they don't even take time to even just, just breathe. You know, just to breathe and just breathe in deep. And, you know, you over, I don't know if some of you all understand that, but we're going to touch on even the science of breathing. You understand? I mean, these are, these are the, the, the simple things that don't cost no money to do or whatnot, you know, and can be very healing. You understand? Can be very um, stabilizing to one's health and one's healthiness. You understand? And also their productivity. Because the ones who are more confident, you understand, in, in, in a loving Jah, in a loving God, you understand, recognize that we're not these things that haters and demon possessed people, whether they are our color, not our kind, or, or not our color and not our kind, want to tell us and make us believe. It's a confidence game, ain't it? I mean, that's what they've been using on us, though we know that, that they don't even understand how their own systems work. <laughs> you know, and you can see where humanity is going. You understand? So, you know, you know, you know stop, stop that, you know, stop that, 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 that Babylonian train, you know, that, that uh, it's, I don't want to go there right now with that, you know, because um, there are all sort of things on the horizon. He overs and you know we have a short we have a short time of opportunity. You understand, but it's not like we have to rush, but we have to be about His will and learn of Him while there's the opportunity to. You understand, and when you get into the Spirit, the the, the, the pace of the Spirit is there. You understand that trust and that confidence is there, and then you have to get that experience because those who have that experience of faith are some of the most productive um, brothers and sisters out there. Do they fall short? Do they have shortcomings? Don't we all? But I'm talking about the work that we need to do as a family, as a community. We need to build up our trust, you know, our true confidence and faith in one another. If we don't, I mean, just think about this for a moment, not if we don't, but we have faith in these people that, have their fingers so close to a bomb that can destroy everything and we can even rest easy at night. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should not rest easy, but we, 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 we rest easy, you understand, at night, not because we trust in John or know of him, but because we trust in these same people who have been lying and defrauding and cheating and lying against God and destroying his creation on a daily basis. In these ways, that was one part that I wanted to point out right there concerning concerning um, the age of those who could fight in fight in in war or in battle. Then I learned something else here that was interesting too in this first portion. Do you know that in the like two chapters or so, the order of the tribes they changed three times, which is kind of very interesting, and it's interesting that Judah which some of us interpret to be the African-American um, black people, right, African-American Negro, and Isachar or Issachar, Yissachar, which 
some say represents the Mexican, are together. You understand in the third in the third reordering. So I I see a little prophecy. Some some will over over what I mean by this. I see a little prophecy right now. You understand know what's going on even among a lot of our um, Hispanic and and um, so-called Latin American uh, Rastafari people. You understand? There's a great movement Jah is preparing for us. You understand? For I and I to come out. But this is the order. This is this is the spirit. This is the spree. The core, right here. Now, there's there's various other parts right here that I wanted to touch on as well. Um, even Torah studies. But I think I'm gonna stick on stick to age, right? So you got that point about age, right? Now, the the, the first part also it it reaffirms what the Torah says that families are identified by the father's line. Then it makes a, a point here on page 35 um, that the Israelites in ancient days during this time of the the census numbers eight one and eighteen that they displayed virtue by not changing their names. It's interesting if you compare that with Isaiah 65, I think, and 15, where they have um, chosen a curse. Like the people had, had, had threw off their names, just like our true names were taken from us. And virtue in the scriptures signifies power, signifies power. So we have to understand that, that our name, reclaiming our true name and title is very important as well. So... It's not just saying, yes, I have faith, you sit back and you do nothing, but it's also working out our salvation and having that courage of our convictions, you understand, to confront or go through what we need to go through in a righteous, justifiable way, you understand, singularly, but hopefully with community, you understand, but even if it's singularly and we trust in the King of Kings and his Christ, we still are not alone, all right? Now, as I get to this particular part right here, I'm on page, um, I'm on page, okay, same page 35. Um, some said that, okay, taught that the purposes of numbering fighting men, that's the first part of numbers, was to number how many fighting men did they have. Remember, they're still in the wilderness. They are still in the wilderness. They're still a ways away from the promised land but they were getting themselves in order in the wilderness. Are we not in the wilderness of North America? Then, then, then what stoppeth, like, like the Ethiopian eunuch said to Hawadiyah Philippos, he said, what preventeth to me? You know, what preventeth I and I? Right? So right here, um, a man who was over 60 years of age was excluded. So it even gives age of service for the tabernacle or for the ministry. And I think this is the very, very key point, you understand, that we have to keep in mind, being in proper order. You see, order is the, order is the first matter, is, 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 the first, is the first issue, order. You know, of the, seven, of, the, of, the, of, of the seven seals in man, as well as the seven grades, there's order, Will, wisdom, righteousness, that's the heart chakra. You understand? That's where the true maturity of the new birth should bring one to that heart chakra of consciousness. So we have the foundation is, 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 is order, which is Torah. Then we have will, wisdom, righteousness, patience, love, patience, love, mercy. Patience, yeah, patience, patience, love, mercy. Let's see, love, yeah, love is second to, love, love is, love is this, love is right here, love is, see, see, that, 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 that I, how, is our, is our I healthy? Is it singular, in that sense? Is it healthy? Now, that's the higher chakras, but let's get back to the first chakra, that's order, you understand, and what's the color of that? The color of that is 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 uh is is red. Now let's just bring this right here. I mean we, we we mentioned this before, and perhaps we go into another part of this to show 
how this flag right here is the banner of salvation. Now, what's so interesting, you know, when you turn the flag upside down, that's the way these um, sodomite and homosexual groups, they have the spectral colors upside down. And some um, disorientated Rastafari, unless they say they are representing um, a West African nation, then that's the West African flag. But if they turn these colors upside down, either they are in distress or perhaps because of lack of knowledge, they are in distress. And somebody needs to give them a proper orientation. But um, I point that out because this first color right here, if you notice, red is first from foundation. The, the color of the lion, the anbesa, which is the second color of the chakra, is orange, right? Remember, order, will, the yellow is wisdom, and the green, for, which is the color of Georgis as well, the color of that holy martyr, you understand the color of our patron saint, some say it's also the color of um, Caduce Mikael. Some say Michael's color. Some say it's also the color of Al Khadir, who some say is also Melchizedek. Is this this green right here? So we know that green is the heart chakra. You understand? And then the link with the Moshiach is in green. And if you notice the symbolism of this flag, what is in the green? It's the crown. It's the crown with what? The cross. This is the true no cross, no crown. You understand? Know because the lion is carrying the cross. And so these, these three colors here, the three primary colors along with this asthma is significant. You understand? Know In its symbolic logic with the true order of the king of kings and with this true Rastafari Judah. You understand? Know we talk about Rastafari and true Judah. I, some say Judaism, you know, if they want to say ism, they can make a schism, but we understand how we mean ism. But this Rastafari Judah, this foundation is scriptural. This is why when we turn to the next page right here, right, we find out, we find out that anyone, anyone over 60 years of age, right, anyone who's over 60 years of age was excluded or exempt from fighting. That only makes sense. You know, if one has been tried in this long, but see, things have been so out of order for I and I as Rastafari for so long, we, we, we now have to overcome the inertia because some are comfortable in that inertia, and even in that state of inertia, they think that they are making movements. All they are caught up is in the wheels of that rat race. You understand, you know, like, like the rat on the treadmill. You know, I th think it's going somewhere, but it's actually going nowhere while it's looking at that goal. You understand? We are greater and better, you understand, than rats. At least I and I should think we are, aren't we? All right? So now, as we go now to the banners in Chapter 2, I'm just touching on a couple of points leading back up to this, or leading forward to this particular Torah portion. Because as we went over this particular book here, we said, wow, we really need to finish up the last book here so we can get the whole set and put more emphasis on these studies and give some examples of why they are really, really important. In fact, on the banners, which are called the Dego in the Hebrew in Numbers 2 and 2, a study, a Dinat or a Midrash, it taught that each tribe had a distinctive flag and a different color corresponding to the precious stones on Aaron's breastplate, and that it was from these banners. It's from these sort of banners, like what you see the lion carrying. You can see how the lion is carrying. You, you understand the lion is carrying these particular banners right there. So you can see it's almost like a fractal, a kind of a fractal kind of embedding going on within the symbolism. You understand it's like itself in itself. It's mirrored within itself. But it is from these banners that governments, that modern governments, 
learn to provide themselves with flags of various colors. And another Tinnat, another Ayhudawi Tinnat or Midrash, it cited the words, quote, his standard or banner over me is love in Song of Songs 2 and 4 to teach that it was with a sign of great love that Jah organized the Israelites under standards like the ministering angels. That right there is a whole reasoning in itself, if you understand what was said right there. That is because of Jah's great love to us that he has given us this banner. You understand? This banner of salvation. You understand? This is the banner of revelation. This is the banner of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, of Christ, in his kingly character. But when we go a little bit, I want to say even deeper than that, but when we now apply it, when we apply this, notice what it says right here, that it's because of God's great love that he organized Beta Israel, and therefore it's because of his great love for I and I that he has, he has shown us and is opening I and I eyes to this order this order and to this organization of his. You see, the Metzhaf Kedus, uh, the scriptures, this is, this is our constitution. This is, uh, this is the, 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 the manual, you understand, for our divine heritage. You understand, what says, seek ye first. What? First, the kingdom, right? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things will be added. But folks are going after the wrong things, trying to establish the wrong things. You understand? Or trying to do the right things in the wrong way. You understand? On feeling, but not on knowledge. On zeal, but not knowing what they are doing. Now, going through this right here, this is forward. This, there, was, there was another portion right here that was on the... The flags, I think it was in the second. Let's get to Naso. So what we did, we just went back to um, the Midbar and touched on a couple, of, a couple of very interesting points that stood out there. And now we're going to go to, um, now we're going to go to Naso. And a couple of interesting things I noticed in Naso. Because in Naso, Perhaps we'll, we'll, we'll do this in a part two, a part two of this particular reasoning right here. It, it's talking about, um, I think, Torah study. Torah study. Well, okay, right here, it's, it, it's, it's telling us that um, with the encampment of the Levites, um, it's saying on page 79 that the Midrash explained that from the south came the dew, and the rain that brought blessing to the world. Interesting, because from the south would be um, Ethiopia or the Horn of Africa, you know, and the real ancient Horn of Plenty. But the Midrash explains that from the south came the dew and the rain that, br that bring blessing to the world. And there, God, John, placed the Kohathites, in the order around the, the tabernacle, right, who bore the ark that carried the Torah. For as Leviticus 26, verses 3 to 4, and Leviticus 15 to 19 teach, the rains depend on the observance of Torah. Did you hear that? That the rains depend on the observance of Torah. You wonder why Africa... Is so dry. Why Ethiopia is, um, had been going through this this um, instability? You understand in its fertile, in its very fertile um, atmosphere and climate, and it's beautiful for situation. Is is what Holy Mount Zion. But why it's going through that? Because the rains, the rains depend on the observance of the Torah. In other words. So when people become lawless, why do they think that Jah will bless them? See, this is not just a lesson for those people over there, but it's a lesson for I and I, here, there, and everywhere. You understand? And even though that is dealing with the land, 
John it blesses us in other ways similar to the land, or we can use the land as a metaphor, you will send for other sorts of blessings, right? But here clearly the rain, so if there's a famine and a lack of rain, that would explain what Haile Selassie said to them. He said, does man cause famine or does God? And just like the question that Yeshua had asked the Pharisees concerning, well, um, where did John get his, like, authorization, you know, from heaven or from men? They couldn't answer, well, they didn't want to answer that because they knew they were caught out there. And those who heard his majesty's question also did not answer his majesty concerning that whole famine propaganda and famine folly. It's very clear that the rains, notice the connection with the south, right, and also Egypt in ancient times was called the world. Egypt was known as the world. If, if you understand that, we can get into some detail. Just take a note and, and check it out for yourself. Now, as I move a couple of more pages forward, right, it even explains how singing, I know a lot of our brothers and sisters are, are musical. It's interesting because um, one in the name of another had derived that the Levite's obligation to sing songs while offering sacrifice from the words of Numbers chapter 4, verses 47, to do the work of the service. That this one reason that the work that requires service is the song. The work that requires service is the song, which is a very interesting connection of the proper music, the proper songs. In other words, it's the king's music, true reggae music, roots music is the king's music. So we must learn the new song. You'll send that new song and to sing that new song. But that's also part of the work of the service. Now, some infers from other places in this same chapter that from 30 years old, everyone entereth upon the service. Numbers 4 and 35, that a man attains his full age at 30. Now, now there's some very interesting um, teaching here on the age. You understand? And we have to recognize that priesthood, that, that the true function, you understand, of the ministry requires those who are both prepared, you understand, properly prepared and also age appropriate. You know, so that's saying to the youngins out there, when I say youngins, those who might be younger than 20, you understand, this is a very um, key opportunity and time to study, you know, and to, to, to become familiar with it. In other words, it's, to, to try to go into the service without the proper boot camp and being of the proper age is not recommended. Now, this does not speak about one's personal faith. One's faith in God and knowledge in God can grow. You know, but you have to recognize that there, there are certain standards and certain requirements, and we do wrong when we ignore those kind of ancient landmarks, so to speak. Because um, some say that the scripture speaks to the Levites, 30 years old and upward. They did service in the tent of the meeting. While in Numbers 8 and 24 it says from 25 years old and upward, they shall go in to perform the service in the work of the, meet, the tent of meeting. Now, it was deduced that the difference here teaches that all those five years from the age of 25 to the age of 30, what happened? The Levites, and now this applies to us if we speak about Melchizedek. We said Melchizedek after the order of Melchizedek. Then according to um, Hebrews chapter 7, this applies to us. And according to the teaching of his majesty, this applies to us. From the age of 25 to the age of 30, the Levites studied. They studied, they served apprenticeship, and from that time onward, they were allowed to draw near to do service. They could not draw near. So they were like, imagine concentric circles, right? And usually they say there are three main uh, um, parts of the tabernacle. In the Ethiopian circular tabernacle, there's also three main parts. To draw near means 
to be able to serve at the ark, you understand, in, in other words, in the center place. One can still do certain other service within the ministry, so we have to understand this. This is very important, right? Now, it was concluded that a Levite could not enter the, the temple or the tabernacle courtyard to do service unless he has served an apprenticeship of five years. Now, it was inferred from this that students or Dekamiz Amorit disciples who see no sign of success in their studies within a period of five years will never see any. This is what some of the Hebrews and, and Jews had concluded, and there may be some truth to that. You understand? Um, now, Rabbi Jose said that students had to see success within three years, and he based his um, position on the words that are found in Daniel 1 and 15, which, which read or interpreted that they should be nourished three years. So we're learning certain things about age and age appropriateness as well as preparation. Now, there's a whole other section here I wanted to get into a little more detail on, but just to um, hopefully keep you interested in, in, in how this is so applicable to us, you understand, um, having these instructions. You know, it says, um, hear the instruction of your father, forsake not the law of your mother. I think that is Proverbs, what, 1 and, one and 8? Here a midrash, Ihudawi uh, Tanakh, 